Hello and welcome back to a War for XC Sharp tutorial series. Uh, in this episode, I'm going to be going over, uh, following on from the starting settings video, on the tactical map and everything to do with it. I'm also going to be recreating the original video on this exact subject. I will be going over each individual button and area and what they do. Do keep in mind there was a lot of information here, so if you do have a problem understanding or didn't get exactly what you wanted, um, then do let me know. Um, I will put some notations in the comments and stuff like that. There's a lot to cover, a lot of information, and it's one of the reasons Aurora seems so intimidating to uh, lots of people. So I'm in my Let's Play series game here, um, and I'm just going to show you uh, a few things. So once you've loaded in, you won't see any of this, so don't worry about it. Uh, what I am going to do for you is quickly, I'm just going to load in to a uh we'll load into a new game uh just just to kind of show you what it will look like uh, and then we're just going to run through the tactical map all of its buttons all of its things and um how you make it work as well as the changes from c sharp to ev6 and, and and various other things um there's a lot of information here and you don't have to worry about a lot of it but it is important that you know most of it um, so once we've loaded in here to a fresh game, it's quite a while, unfortunately. Okay, there we go. So, um, when you first load in, your game will look something like this, uh, and the main things that you're going to want to know is basically all of this, all of this, and what this means. So we're going to look at the very surface level stuff first, and that is what you are looking at is the system view. System view is of all system bodies uh, within the system you have selected. So, on Earth, we can see where Earth is, we can see all of these bodies here. Uh, these bodies that are outlined with a little bit of uh, a trail and, and a blue mark, that's comets. We've got Mars and and all of this stuff and all these orbital paths and stuff like this. So it's pretty cool. You can see the Cooper Bell. You can see um, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, uh, Neptune, all of that good, good, good stuff. And this is where you'll see your ships moving in and out. It's where you'll... Um, see active combat happening um, and it's where you'll do a lot of your stuff the next thing is going to be if you hold down alt or shift my bad shift while on this you can move a cursor around to see how far something is uh, from that point so from earth to uh, let's go to uh, mars where's mars again there we go so from earth to Mars, we're looking at around 200 million kilometers at that space. Now, it's not an accurate number, but we can roughly estimate that's how much based on this line. Okay, um, so that's something to keep in mind as well. Um, now, if you go over here, this is a very important part of the game, and this will show you basically all of your checkboxes and things. It will be left on display normally. So, orbital paths, which is what these uh, lines are around here. You can turn them off accordingly. So if I want to turn off planetary orbital paths, there you go. If I want to turn on uh, uh, dwarf planet orbital paths, I can do that. So like Ceres, etc. If I want to turn on asteroid orbital paths, you can get that screen, which um, is interesting. I do not advise turning that on. Um, and you can also see the extra dwarf planets here that are around the system. Cool. Then, I'm just going to go down the list and then do this list as well. Then we have surveyed bodies. Uh, these are bodies that you have surveyed. Earth will already be surveyed. So we'll get into more geological surveying and stuff like that. If you want to, go watch my conventional Let's Play series or my conventional Starting Step series. That will explain that more. No mineral concentrations and mineral concentrations. So this will uh, basically put a ring around a, uh, a body with minerals on it. Uh, center on selected objects. So if I select that object, it will center around Earth. But if I turn this off uh, and I select this, it won't. S uh, asteroid with colonies only. Asteroid with minerals only. So asteroids with a designated colony on them. 
and asteroids with minerals on them. They do basically what they say on the tin. Fleet heading. So if you have a fleet, it will show the heading of that uh, fleet on the map. Order, time, and distance. Same thing. It will show on that fleet. Body slash fleet coordinates. It will show on the fleet. Uh, no sh uh, child slash parent overlaps. Um, that's very useful in terms of moving things around. Uh, so basically, if you have like a fleet stacked on top of each other, that can be very helpful. It basically means no child and flesh parent overlaps. Hide, hide surveyed locations. So if you've surveyed a location, it will hide it. Um, as in uh, these points, which are survey locations. So if you survey this, it will hide it, but you can turn it back on to not hide it. Uh, and then packed content, which is for mass drivers as they barrel minerals across the, the universe. Um, salvo launch platform, where the salvo is being launched from, salvo target, the target of the salvo, uh, passive signatures, so as we can see here, this will basically show you your detection of EM and passive sensors. So Earth has deep space tracking stations, which allows it to track um, EM and thermal signatures uh, at this range. All windows linked to race, so if you're playing a multiple race start, this can be very useful because it can basically mean that you uh, don't open up multiple tabs of the same race, uh, of different races. Keep tactical in background, this will always keep the, the tactical map in the background um, and will ensure it's always there. Uh, then we have events, this button is extremely important, you want to have events on uh, as much as you want. Because basically what it will do is if we just go forward in time here, um, I'm just going uh, go to that, because that's going background. So I go five days here, this is where the events will show up, and I'll show up through here. Um, and this will allow you to basically uh, see what's happening. You want this on pretty much all the time. Then colonies, that marks what colonies are. You can see the difference on the map as Earth it goes back and forth. Jump points, it will show active jump points, which are from survey locations. Planets, it'll show you a planet, so toggle them off, moons, uh, asteroids, fleets, live plots, vex, so basically it'll just toggle them viewable on the map. Uh, waypoints, uh, survey locations, so if we turn that off, and we go out, I turn survey locations on. So basically these are all just toggles that will turn them on for you to see, minimal pack kits, uh, active sensors, so this will show active sensors once they've been turned on. Fire control range, which is the range of the fire control, the actual weapon or missile or laser range, the movement trail. So if we go over to a comet, uh, uh, it doesn't affect comets for some reason, but for fleets, it'll show your movement trail, and I'll turn that off. Hide escorts. Um, I don't believe escorts are in just yet, so that's a bit of an overlap from VB6. Geo survey points, it will show you all of the geo survey points, so the amount of points you need to survey the uh, body uh, here. And then uh, we have star names, and then all these names that you can turn on and off, and then fleet next order, and then we have comet path uh, here, which will show the path of all the comets coming in and out. So that is what display does. Contacts, you can turn on and off different types of contacts, civilians, so if you don't like seeing all those civilians, you can turn off civilians. Ally, neutral, uh, active only, group contacts, sensor range, distances and tracking bonuses. Lost contacts, basically shows contacts. Basically shows contacts that you've lost, but have detected previously. So if you detect a, a ship here uh, on like this asteroid, and then you move away and you don't detect anymore, it will show lost contact. Uh, display single race contacts only, all races, and a complete contact uh, unit. So that's what contacts does. Minerals, it will show minerals. A big thing about this is make sure you reset once you've surveyed. So like if you survey a bunch of bodies, it won't show up here immediately. You need to click this again, and it will refresh the page for that. Min text, this is what AARs. This allows you to easily show all the text of uh, the planet. Artifacts, any artifacts, known ruins, anomalies, or wrecks. We've seen my Xenoarchaeology and ruins video and that kind of stuff. Survey sites, it will display all survey sites in the universe. This is also in the universe as well. Body info, so if I click on Earth, well that clicks on Luna, but if I want to click on Earth, there we go, it will show me the body info. Uh, now if I want all bodies, it will show me all bodies in the solar system. Military, it will show me military in the system. So all my admin commands in system, 
um, and you can turn it off to be the entire universe and you can also turn that into include civilians as well. Uh, waypoint, you can create new waypoint, so normal waypoint, named waypoint, uh, rendezvous, point of interest, urgent point of interest, and then you can delete those waypoints by selecting this and deleting that. Now keep in mind, um, the the reason there's a rendezvous point of interest and urgent point of interest is due to standing orders. So you maybe ask yourself, well, why would you ever do that? Just name it that, right? Um, that is is for quick easiness, and it's also because there's standing orders that particularly go for those kind of waypoints. So that's just a little thing you need to know. Uh, miscellaneous here, you can add a new name theme, so you can add a, a new type of theme, um, and you can add a commander theme. Um, and once you do, it will open up into this and you'll be able to select uh, new themes that they will use and you'll be able to use for yourself. You can also reset all windows from here, which if there's like a bug or something. Uh, next is going to be, uh, I think, yeah, we, fin we finished toolbar. So that's the toolbar and all, oh yeah, just make sure if you want to switch systems and you've just got more systems, it's this button. And if you want to switch races, it's this button. So there you go. That is the toolbar, essentially. And that is one of the most important parts of Aurora 4X. Next, we're going to talk about this place. So, this is very obvious. It moves you in and out, and this does this. But you can use mouse wheel like this, and you can also drag around. So, this is more of just like a manual way of doing it, and also a... Um, a a nostalgia, you know, it's 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 from the bypass of VB6 where you couldn't scroll in and out, you couldn't drag and move things. So keep that in mind. Uh, next, you've got all of these buttons. These buttons are your windows. So this is how you actually play the game. This is all of the windows that you're going to be looking at. So for research window, uh, for wealth and economics, and for minerals, and all of this stuff that you can see here. So I will go, I'm not going to do explain each of the individual tabs and what's under them, otherwise we will be here for literally ever. I'm just going to explain what each tab is, and then I'll be making further videos that you can go and see how to actually use those tabs. There's already one in industry, um, so keep that in mind. So, uh, this tab shows your colony summary. This tab is uh, showing your industry tab, uh, and as well as that. If you don't want to click these, you can just go mining, shipyard, shipyard tasks, shipyard, all of that stuff. This is for minerals, this is for uh, research, this is for wealth. Uh, this is for class design, so designing new ships. This is for designing new components to put on the ships. This is for organizing your fleet and making movement orders for your fleet. This is for designing missiles. This is for designing turrets. This is for ground force design. This is for assigning commanders and looking at your commander list. This is your medals, where you see your medals and, and make medals as well. Uh, this is your race details, so you can see the details of your race. This is system view, so you can see the entire system with uh, extended information about the gravity, temperature, pressure, and atmosphere of all of that. If you want to see more about this, go to my terraforming mechanics version 2 video, uh, if you do want to see that. Uh, and this is the galaxy map. This is Hubbard's uh, race comparison, my bad. Race comparison details. Uh, this is uh, other alien races you might find. This is technology report, so you can see what technologies you have researched. This is mineral survey that you can see what, uh, you can search for minerals that you have surveyed. You can be like, okay, I want to find galacite, find galacite. Uh, this is sector management. This is events. This is very important. You'll be able to see your events much easier through here. Uh, this is, you re you can refresh, you can save. A big part of this is in C Sharp, you cannot, and I stress this enough, in, it is not like VB6, you have to manually save. You cannot get auto saves uh, in C Sharp unless you're using mods, and I do not use mods, and I do not endorse using mods myself, uh, because... I, for my own opinion, because I don't like them, and I and I think that that's not how Steven Tennant to be played, but if you want to go do it, that's totally fine. But keep in mind that all these tutorials are going to be modless, so everyone can understand them and there's no confusion. Settings, this is how you create new games. We already went through that one. This turns on Space Master, on and off. And this turns on Auto Turns, on and off. So, 
What is a turn? What is an increment? <sighs> Stay with me here. No, we've gone through a lot of information. No, we've been going through a lot of things. Um, turn this on, and this will basically allow you to uh, automate your your increments. So you have a selection of increments here. So you have five seconds, thirty seconds, two minutes, five minutes, twenty minutes, one hour, three hours, eight hours, one day, and five days, thirty days. Then you have sub pulses. So this is the amount of time that um, you it will pull it will actually register the stuff. So like um, normally you have it on auto, and I recommend you put it on auto. But if we have like uh, if if we do like thirty days. Oh, there's some error that's going on right now. Don't worry about it. I think that this game was a little screwed up. So, yeah. But, yeah, if we had, like, five days and we were incrementing every five days and we had, like, set it to, like, an hour or whatever, then it would sub-pulse every hour and that would basically allow you to... Um, it, it would basically register the, if anything happens in that time um, and it would pulse that fast. So keep that in mind. Usually it just auto sets this appropriately and you don't need to worry about it. So really don't worry about it. Just care about this. So if you want to take a five day increment, you can do a five day increment. If you want to do five days at a time without errors like that, then it'll work. But there's some errors that I'm having in this game for some reason, which makes no sense. Um, but yeah, this basically when it's green, you'll be able to just press this. And if there's no interrupts, so and what an interrupt is, is when you complete something. So let's say I complete a research. Um, that is going to mean that the game will interrupt me because, hey, you complete the research. Do you want to add a new research? Like this. This is an interrupt. So it will stop the auto turn happening so you don't just go a million years in the future without registering anything. So keep that in mind. So you're going to make sure those clips cleared up. If the game ever goes to a halt, then go to your event tab over here and find out what's causing it. That, that's the biggest tip I can give you. Anyway, we've gone through pretty much everything um, in uh, the tactical map area. This is all quite surface level, obviously. All of these tabs do their own thing. All these tabs build onto each other. So I will be going over them individually, but this is just for newer players, newer people getting into the game, kind of explaining how stuff is. Let me know if there's anything you want me to clarify on in the comments below. I hope you have enjoyed this episode. I'll see you next time. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, as it really does help out the YouTube channel. Um, as I try and put as much effort into these videos as possible and get them out for you guys. Uh, I currently upload 14 videos a week, so it's really awesome to see how much support there is for that. I'll see you uh, tomorrow, uh, and bye-bye. Uh,